those of you who've been following the show for a while now know that I've called into the David Pakman show a couple times. I believe I've called into the show between like eight, ten times now. Usually when I call in, I try to get David to clarify on some of his incredibly hacky takes, like when he was smearing Tulsi Gabbard right out the gates as soon as she had launched her campaign for the 2020 Democratic primary, or his reluctance to support primary challenges of corporate Democrats. But most of the time I I call into the show, I try to ask critical questions about the centrist corporate Democrats in the party, because honestly, I think that's a perspective that a lot of people in David Beckman's audience don't get very often, because a lot of them only listen to, only watch MSNBC or the Majority Report or David Beckman or whatever. And as we know, criticism of corporate Democrats in these places are few and far between. The very last time I called into David's show, I asked him what I think is an incredibly reasonable question about Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy, and David's response was really bad. Some of the main things I took away from this interaction with David was, one, he was being incredibly disingenuous throughout this interaction. The question I asked David was incredibly straightforward, and I gave him enough information that he could run with it and and give a solid, straightforward answer, but instead... He was bending over backwards to avoid answering the direct question. In fact, he never answered the question that I originally asked him. He deliberately tried to change the topic to avoid answering the question, and I'm going to show you guys that. But from the statements that he made, it was clear that he was going to go out of his way to not be critical of Elizabeth Warren. And this points to a larger problem that I'm seeing in new media. A lot of people are making these weird rationalizations when it comes to Elizabeth Warren that nominally she calls herself a progressive. A lot of people, it's widely accepted amongst certain groups that Elizabeth Warren is progressive and it's not really questioned. So they've come up with this strategy that they are going to go easy on Elizabeth Warren or they're not going to be too critical of Elizabeth Warren because they see her as an ally in the race and she's someone who can help Bernie Sanders beat all these. She'll team up with Bernie Sanders to beat all these other corporate Democrats. So whatever we do, we can never be too critical of Elizabeth Warren. We can never ask the tough questions or bring up the the facts that just make her look bad because we should be focusing on doing that to the corporate Democrats in the race. The problem with that logic is, by definition, that requires you to intentionally mislead your audience because at that point, it's not like you're following the facts and if the facts make Elizabeth Warren look bad, then fuck it, so be it. You are going, you have your own agenda. Your agenda is, I want Elizabeth Warren to stay in this race, so I'm going to avoid talking about certain things. I'm going to avoid doing objective fact-based analysis because I think that's going to make people on the left dislike Elizabeth Warren. That is mental. I wouldn't do that for anyone. I wouldn't do that for Bernie Sanders. I wouldn't do that for Tulsi Gabbard. Basically, shilling for a politician. If Bernie Sanders does something wrong, I'm not going to intentionally avoid it because I think that some people in my audience might be turned off from Bernie Sanders because of it. If he does something wrong, like with this, when the, the whole thing was happening with Julian Assange, like months went by, Bernie Sanders didn't say a goddamn word about it. I was incredibly critical of Bernie Sanders of, over that, and... I wasn't at all worried about how people would perceive my criticism criticism of Bernie Sanders because that's entirely irrelevant. But for some reason, in 2019, in this in this Democratic primary, people in new media have come to the conclusion that Bernie Sanders is so incapable, he's so incompetent, and he's so feeble that he ha- he stands no chance of wiping the floor with all of these uninspiring, milk toast, status quo defending corporate Democrats. He has no chance against them, so we have to do everything in our power to keep Elizabeth Warren in this race so she could team up with Bernie Sanders and help him out. Even if that means we have to be disingenuous and hide the ball when it comes to what Elizabeth Warren actually supports and how she's actually not that much of an ally to the progressive movement. And the other thing that that really stood out to me was that David Pakman is a lot more trusting, or I, I should put it this way, I guess he's a lot less critical of the national security apparatus, the generals at the Pentagon and and the admirals and the commanders or whatever, than any other leftist, any other non-interventionist anti-regime change 
person I've ever come across. So I have the clip right here. It's about uh, four minutes long. I encourage you to watch the whole clip because some of the things that David says is just fucking bonkers. And you have to hear him say it for yourself. There are a lot of prominent left-wing intellectuals like Dr. Cornel West and Noam Chomsky. They make the point that you can't really have a left-wing movement without a, a real criticism of U.S. foreign policy. So my question is, for all people who consider themselves progressives and leftists and non-interventionists, shouldn't Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy be a disqualifying factor for what? Which uh, which position of her specifically, though? Do you mean? I mean, her mo- a lot of her positions on, on foreign policy are just bad. She's not really. She hasn't really had. Uh, well, on the Israel-Palestine conflict back in. I think it was like 2014, 2015, something like that, when Netanyahu was doing the the massacre in Gaza in the West Bank. She was literally using uh, his um, IDF talking points about human shields and they have to defend themselves and all that. Um, on other issues like Yemen, she hasn't really been up front. And it's important that, and voting on, on the military budget, but it's important that, especially in the time that we're in now, where we're in eight illegal wars, the illegal war in Iraq, Yemen, Syria, it's important that we have somebody who's out front on these issues of foreign policy, and Elizabeth Warren is definitely not going to do that. She she usually goes along with whatever the establishment wisdom is in the national security apparatus, and she listens to the generals. And if you're going to do that in the White House, it's just going to be a continuation of the disastrous U.S. foreign policy. So let's see if we can disaggregate some of those things. I mean, uh, so the, her vote on military spending is the one thing that you've mentioned that is the most concerning to me. Uh, and I'm, I'm absolutely on board as far as that goes. You know, her line about Israel has to be allowed to defend itself. Bernie Sanders literally used that same line during his 2016 campaign, and it angered a lot of people on the left. Um, but that is not, that, that line, you know, Bernie used that line as well, and that is not a, really a concern to me. What's more of a concern to me is, what is going to be the relationship between the American president and the sometimes right-wing governments of Israel in terms of looking other, the other way when it comes to things like settlements, for example, or what have you. So I don't think that that line from Elizabeth Warren from five years ago is, is particularly uh, problematic. Now, as you mentioned, I think that Elizabeth Warren will just listen to the generals. I believe that basically everybody who has a shot at this thing on the Democratic side is going to listen to the generals. And I don't think that that's a bad thing in a sense. I mentioned last week, a lot of people write into me, Dante, and they say, David, aren't you worried that Bernie will weaken our military? Aren't you worried that Warren will weaken our military, that they won't do anything if we're attacked. I think that Biden, Warren, and Bernie, who are the three people at this point who have a shot, all recognize, unlike Donald Trump, that they are not the experts about when and how to use the military, and they are going to listen to their generals and the Pentagon. I, I don't think that that's different with the three of them. What is different is from a, from a geopolitical perspective, their outlook on some of these conflicts and issues, but I think when it comes down to the issues of national security, I think they're all going to listen to the generals. Yeah, I understand logistically, like, okay, if we need to move troops, like Bernie Sanders, he says he wants to end the war, so he wants to get our troops out of Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and all these other conflicts. So he's not he's not going to be deferring to the generals. Hello? All right, we lost Dante. Okay. Wow. So let's start at the beginning. The original question, prominent intellectuals like Cornel West, Noam Chomsky, have made the point you cannot have a real left-wing movement in the United States without a a scathing structural critique of U.S. foreign policy and and our imperialism around the world. Do you think Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy should should be disqualifying for people who call themselves progressives, leftists, non interventionists? That was a very clear, straightforward question. And I have to say, David's response to that really did, it threw me and I wasn't expecting it. David responds by asking me a a question. Can you give me a specific example of Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy being disqualified? Now, I'm sure if you ask David and you ask some of his biggest fans, they would say, oh, David's just doing this so that he can have you elaborate and he can have you really clarify what your thoughts are on this issue so that we can have a real substantive dialogue about it counter one the question was already structured well enough that we could have a a substantive dialogue on that alone there was a a lot you could run with from that question and that framing so for me when he asked the question it looked like he just was trying to avoid answering the question that i asked him just now and i have to say 
that kind of threw me for a loop and I was not prepared for that. I really wasn't. And you could see, by the way, I was kind of tripping over my words when, when I was trying to, when I was giving him examples of Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy because I legitimately, and maybe I'm naive, maybe I'm, you could call me unprepared or whatever you could, whatever, but I genuinely was not prepared for that. And let me tell you why. This interaction is, this is at most like a, supposed to be like a five minute interaction. I, a leftist, social democrat, non-interventionist, am calling into David Peckman's show, who calls himself a progressive social democrat, non-interventionist. Because that's how we identify ideologically. There should be just a base of, of information that we both can agree with and are just really not up for debate. Imagine if I was having a conversation with Kyle Kalinske, and at most, it's it's going to be a five minute interaction, and we're talking about Medicare for all, and we we're um talking about some of the stories in the, that are in the news about it, and talking about the corporate Democrats' opposition to Medicare for all, and somewhere in there, I mentioned that either Bernie Sanders' Medicare for all single payer health care bill or Pramila Jayapal's in the House; those are the two best healthcare proposals by far out of any politician in the country. If I say that to Kyle Kalinske, I'm not expecting pushback on that. I'm not expecting him to get hung up on that one part of what I said, and, and I'm not expecting him to respond with, can you explain how Bernie Sanders or Pramila Jayapal's healthcare plan would be the be- is better than every other politician in the country? That's like grandfathered into the conversation. We both agree on a, a base of, of knowledge when it comes to the issue of healthcare in the United States. 40,000 people die unnecessarily every year because they can't afford basic health care. 500,000 people go bankrupt because they can't afford their medical bills. This is not a thing that happens in any other country because other modern industrial countries have single-payer health care or a form of single-payer health care, and the government funds the overwhelming majority of health care costs for the citizens. We all agree to that, so it would be incredibly weird if we have a, a me and Kyle Klinsky have a short interaction and his pushback is, can you, you explain how single payer or Medicare for all is better than like a public option or is it better than tweaking the Affordable Care Act? That would be incredibly weird. With Elizabeth Warren and foreign policy, it's the same exact thing. It should be universally accepted amongst all leftists, all progressives, all social democrats, and all non interventions that Elizabeth Warren on foreign policy is terrible. She is shit on foreign policy. That isn't up for debate. Any area you want to go, foreign policy, she's bad. Venezuela, Iran, Saudi Arabia, covert CIA, State Department involvement in, in other countries, funding and arming terrorists and rebels to overthrow governments we don't like. Elizabeth Warren is wrong on all of those things. Fighting endless wars, Elizabeth Warren is wrong on all of those issues. So if a leftist is having a conversation with another social democrat, I don't think I have to explain to you why Elizabeth Warren on foreign policy is just bad. So it's not that I don't know this information about Elizabeth Warren, but I was genuinely caught off guard when he when he tried to reroute the conversation so that he could avoid answering that very straightforward question about Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy being disqualified. Because I think he knows that Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy is disqualified. So off the top of my head, I I, I come up with some things about Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy that are just un- indefensible. Um, the fact that she's pro-Israeli genocide of Palestinians. Um, the fact that she, the fact that she votes to increase the already absurd Pentagon budget that's going to fund endless wars and regime change operations around the world, or the fact that she's just overall not critical of U.S. foreign policy. I bring up all those things. How does David respond to that? What about his, um, and just flat out doing apologetics at one point. So David starts by saying, the only thing you mentioned that concerns me is voting for the, the Pentagon budget. That's the only thing that he sees problematic in all the in the things that I just listed about Elizabeth Warren's foreign policy. Wow. Um, so now let's go into those specific things because he touches on them individually. On the Israel on the massacre in in Gaza and the West Bank back in 2014, over 2,000 Palestinians were murdered in the West Bank and in Gaza back in 2014. Most confrontations with Israel and the Palestinians. Israel was the aggressor. Israel was doing most of the killing. I, I don't even believe there were any Israelis that were killed during this entire um, military operation. So 2,000 Palestinians are killed, 80% of them, at least 80% of them civilians. And the majority of them 
our children. And when that was happening, politicians in the U.S. were being asked about it, asked about us continuing to send Israel weapons and funding this genocide and, and standing by them while they're committing this genocide. And you have people like Elizabeth Warren come out and say, Using using literal IDF and Netanyahu talking points about oh man these Palestinians they, they the the Hamas keeps taking all these human shields and gathering all these civilians kids and women and children and hiding behind them so that we don't bomb them they're using human shields and of course we have to bomb them because they're Hamas and they're terrorists and they're a threat to us so even if they're using those hum- human shields we have to bomb them. That was basically Elizabeth Warren's position. Doing apologetics for a literal genocide that was happening at that moment with U.S. weapons and U.S. backing. That was her response. And yes, I, I believe Bernie Sanders also had a shit response back then too. And I'm, he did get shit for it. He, at the time, back in 2014, his, his position on Israel-Palestine was worse. And he was getting a lot of shit over it from progressives. So for David to now say, oh... It's all cool. It's a wash because Bernie Sanders also said some bad things about Israel-Palestine. So are we really going to hold Elizabeth Warren accountable for that? First of all, that's a false equivalency because Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are not the same on on Israel-Palestine. Bernie Sanders is the most aggressive politician in the U.S. against this occupation and genocide of Palestinians in the Gaza and the West Bank. He's threatening to cut off aid and funding and military support to Israel if they don't stop building settlements. Nobody else is talking about that. So don't just don't do the, oh, they both said this one line, so they're both exactly the same on this issue. So it's a wash. You can't criticize Elizabeth Warren for it. Even if they were, do you not find that problematic? Do you not have any criticism at all for Elizabeth Warren supporting and doing apologetics for a genocide of children in, in Gaza and the West Bank, you have nothing to say about that. You have no criticism at all about, about that. But that's the point that I was I'm trying to make early in the video. It's not... David wasn't... He didn't care to respond to, uh, to that. All he cared to do was make sure that anybody who sees this video in the, in the audience can say that Bernie Sanders did the same exact thing, so it's a wash. You can't really criticize Elizabeth Warren for that. You can't hold you can't say she's worse than Bernie Sanders because of it, because Bernie Sanders said the same thing. That was his whole point. He didn't care to address the the, the fact that she was doing apologetics for a genocide, which by themselves is disgusting disgusting and worthy of immense scathing criticism from anyone. And he tries to minimize how disgusting what Elizabeth Warren was saying back in 2014 actually was he says uh that that line isn't so it's not a, a huge problem for me that her just saying that line isn't a huge problem for me david i didn't bring up that quote and say because elizabeth warren said that quote this one specific quote not five years ago she should be disqualified on foreign policy or or israel palestine position is terrible no it is that line, the the or, or or that rhetoric that, oh whatever the Israel does to the Palestinians, it's it's by definition self defense and it's justifiable and we'll stand by them no matter what. We'll continue to sell them weapons and, and provide them political cover no matter what. That is the problem. It isn't that she's the the her specific one quote. That isn't it. Her whole mindset on the Israel Palestine issue is just that. That fuck it would we'll let the. Uh, uh, Netanyahu and the IDF massacre civilians and we're not going to say anything about it because by definition it's always self-defense because you know all those rowdy, riley, violent Palestinians doing their peaceful marches and all that. So that's the point I was making when I when I brought up that quote or, or Elizabeth Warren's statements back in 2014. She's indifferent to genocide. That is disqualifying to me. That's disqualifying. And her positions, like I said, hasn't changed. David says, oh, what we should really worry about is um, whether or not they, the whoever the, the next president is, whether or not, what, what their position is on building, Israel building new settlements. settlements. Yeah, I think their position on, on Israel doing illegal land grabs is important. Um, is, uh, of course, Elizabeth Warren is wrong on that too. She's um, not going to do anything about that. But why do you think that takes precedent over being indifferent to genocide? That's just a strange... 
thing to me. 